Hello everyone, I'm back with another update for the Cycles plugin for 3ds Max. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've done a video, so I wanted to put one together and show off what the new features lately have been. Uh, and first of all, I have a scene set up here to show off the Motion Blur. Now Motion Blur has been the most uh, requested feature among users, so uh, that's in the plugin now, and I set up this uh, simple scene to show off a little bit of how it works. So there's three, three main uh, things that can cause Motion Blur in a scene in Cycles. And uh, I have a scene here set up that demonstrates two of them, and I'll have another scene later. Um, so what we have here at the start of this scene is the camera moving back and forth, or I guess just one direction. But um, this this is one of the sources is the camera moving, so how objects move relative to the camera will affect uh, their motion blur. And I have that set up real quick here. I'll do a render of this. Actually, first I'll check my settings check my camera to make to turn motion blur off real quick and just show you what this looks like. So this will just be a, a view of these blocks and you can see their blocks no blur at all even though the camera is moving at this point. So when I press this enable motion blur and this is down in the uh, the shutter section of the physical camera, now you'll see that it actually because the camera is moving left to right now we get this horizontal blur uh, across the across the screen. So that's one type. Another type of motion blur is from the object transforms moving, like I have set up here. So right here we just have these kind of, all these different blocks rotating together as one block, and their meshes are not changing between frames here, it is uh, solely their transform that's changing. So I'll go right in the middle here and I'll do a render again, show you what that looks like. And then, uh, and, and so this, this blur you see here is from the objects rotating. And then, depending how much uh, motion blur you want, you can set it here. So if I think that's too much, you can turn it down to 0.2 frames, and it gets a little less blurry. Um, so it does not respect the offset parameter here, but it does respect the duration, and you can pick any of these uh, any of these types here. So the third type of motion blur I want to show off, I will go over to my other scene here. is uh, deform motion blur. So this is what you get if you have uh, any kind of rigged object where it's uh, deforming between frames as it animates. Uh, this is the type of motion blur that will apply. So what I have here is just a box with a bend modifier on it and I've animated the angle on it so it uh, so it does this. So I'll just go right again to the middle here and I will check my camera settings. Motion blur is on so I'll do a render of this. And you can see it's blurring as it's moving uh, from left to right there. I can even move the camera around a little bit. So if you want a better view of the blurring or at a slightly different angle, um, you can go like that. Now I'll render this again. And you can see it's it's blurring along uh, along exactly how it's moving there. And this type also, just like the others, you can change the uh, change the duration so I can make it can turn it down to be not very blurry. And that's a uh, oopsie. It's the wrong wrong viewport. Uh, and there you see, there's just a little bit, a little bit of blur on it now. Um, so that's it for motion blur. Uh, it's a very handy feature to have for animation. Um, another new feature I have another demo file here is the uh, cycles principle BSDF. So I have a material set up here where I just have these two maps: the shape map and the checker that are plugged into the base color and the metallic map. So what this will do is this uh, this shape map will get shown everywhere across the teapot, and this checker will make it so some squares of it are more or less metallic than others. So I'll do a render quick to show off what that looks like. And I have this in active shade here so I can, I can rotate around for a better angle if I want. Um, I'll stop and let it, let it clean up here for a second. As you can see, there's some spart parts like here is the um, lighter part on the checker texture where it's more metallic, and then the darker part on the checker texture uh, is where it's less metallic. So what the cycled principle of material is is it's um, it's very similar to the physical material already in Max, uh, which if you're familiar with that, which I'll show off in a bit, but it's just supposed to be a single material, so you don't have to, you can create uh, relatively complex materials without setting up a big node graph network that has a bunch of diffuse and glossies and transparents and mixed nodes and all that. Uh, so it lets you just have one one node you can really uh, really customize. And what I want to show off here, actually, I will I'll clone this quick. 
So this is what it looks like with the cycles principle BSDF. And to show how similar this is to the physical material, I've created the same material here where it's just these two maps plugged into the base color and the metalness map. And now I will do a render. Now I will assign this material and do another render. And you can see from this they look more or less the same. They're not exactly pixel for pixel the same. Uh, but these two, these two materials will produce very similar results. Uh, they're both trying to give you the same idea of just one, one material is set up rather than a fancy, a fancy graph of a bunch of them. Um, and they, they offer very similar parameters. Uh, so which one you use just depends on which one you'd like more. They, they're slightly different in what you can tweak, but uh, more or less will provide the same sort of results. Uh, one nice thing about the physical material is that it will this is the one built into Max. It will show up nice in the viewport if I click that. Um, so then you can have a relatively good view in the viewport of what it looks like. And the Cycles material does not do that uh, yet. But other than that, they will they will produce about the same results. So um, one other last thing I wanted to show you. Those were the two uh, the two big features. Uh, one other thing, which is a lot of smaller features I've been working on, is the Cycle Shader Graph. And to get at that, or the Shader Graph Editor. And to get at that, you pull out these shader graph nodes here, and the number is just how many uh, texture slots it has. And you can open up the editor. And uh, there's a lot of new features in here now. Like there is a color picker for your nodes. Instead of just typing in RGB, you get your hue slider and your whole your whole color picker there. So that's nice. Um, it also has undo redo now, so I can undo redo. You can see the color change in there. Uh, zoom in and out is new. And I've also just filled out, there were a handful of missing notes before that I'm working on filling out. Um, and there's more in there like the geometry, the object info I think was gone. Um, oh, RGB curve is also new. So RGB curve supports in now and you have this curve editor. You can create points, move them around. You can choose if you want it to be straight lines between the points or if you want it smoothed. Uh, delete points. Uh, so that uh, should give you full control over the, the RGB curves there. Um, and that, that about does it for new features for now. Uh, I'm still adding stuff. I'll have more news soon about what's coming in the future. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I posted the roadmap for other features I'm working on on the site a few weeks ago. That's at cyclesformax.net. Um, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching.